Welcome to DowerTen.com. Today we're going to take a look at using the Porsche Design Book 1 and we're going to talk about the pen and pen performance on this device. And so, um, you know, uh, for those that don't know, this pen is actually a Wacom digitizer. So this is actually one of the very few, uh, very premium uh, systems out there that actually has a Wacom. So it doesn't use Microsoft's Entrig, which you, you know, these kind of pens which you find on the Surface Pro line. This is actually is a dedicated Wacom. And uh, a little bit different than, than some of the other Wacom pens, this one actually uses a battery. So this one actually has a quad A battery, just like the Microsoft ones. Uh, and uh, the battery itself isn't necessarily a Bluetooth type of thing or anything. It actually is for allowing the pen to track better on the screen. All right, so let's go and launch some programs. But before I do that, I want to undock it. Uh, there is a little funny little problem I have that, with this one. I, I think it's a driver issue. I'm trying to work with Porsche Design on it. But if I flip it over into its tablet mode with the keyboard dock on and rotate it around a few times, the tablet driver actually disables. It's a really annoying problem. And I hope to God they fix it with some software. But um, so I'm going to undock it. I'm going to use the button on the side here to undock this device. Hit a little click. I pop it right out. All right, so I'm actually going to move my camera angle a little bit so I can get a little better view so you can see a little bit better from an overhead how this works. All right, so we have my tablet portion of the Porsche Design Book 1 undocked on the table here. And it's in portrait mode and in tablet mode. So first things first, before I do anything, I want to show you that, you know, one of the nice things about this is that the Wacom pen drivers are installed. This is actually very important. I can't tell you how many tablets I've used that never have these installed. And it's a shame because there's lots of things you can do with it. You can use the radio menu if you want to. Most importantly is you can adjust the sensitivity of the tip. That's really important because, uh, you know, some people may have a harder harder touch or a stronger touch. Uh, and you might you can tweak that. Other options also, this allows you to basically change the buttons on the pen itself to say, you know, this bottom one here is the race, top one is any other function you would want. So it's nice that they're having it installed. Now, also, before we get started, there's something else you want to go to. Go to. I have the settings here, but uh, if you go back here and well, actually from the start menu, if you go to the ink settings here, you can take it to the screen. There's a setting here for ignore touch input when I'm using my pen. Now, it is off by default. And I want to show you what happens with it being off. So it doesn't seem, it seems like an innocuous little, little thing. If I can get this thing to kind of go to the start menu. Come on. Here we go. Hello. There we go. Jeez. All right. So hit the sketchbook here. So the sketchbook pro. All right. So in this kind of setting, you can see that as I move to the top, my arm is going to touch the bottom of the tablet. You notice that the menu just kind of popped in. So if I'm kind of drawing over here, and I, put my, I lay my hand down, you notice that the menu keeps popping up. And that's actually very, very annoying because I can inadvertently run programs to do certain things. And it doesn't do it all the time. It's kind of kind of bizarre because right now it's not doing it. But, you know, it, it just takes a little bit of effort and suddenly it comes up. And you see, now it's not doing it. It's, it's kind of weird. I don't understand why um, this tablet is definitely more susceptible than other ones I've used. So as a safety precaution, using the uh, settings here and turning this on, seems to avoid that happening altogether. So I recommend doing that. All right, so let's get started here. I'm gonna go new, get to a clean slate here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so this has palm re rejection. So my hand is right on the screen. So I like it being this way, it's comfortable. And let's do some freehand line drawing. So I'm gonna do some freehand lines going across. Uh, I'll vary the pressure, go from light to strong. Now the funny thing is, I noticed that as harder I push, the I see some of the some of the, the screen deform a little bit. So I think the pressure is actually pushing down on the on the layer glass layer is actually going into the screen a little bit. So it's kind of deforming a little bit. It's kind of kind of weird, but it, you know I guess you gotta be careful not to kind of get too heavy handed on it. So if I go slow, you know vertical lines seem to handle just fine. All right. So then uh, let's do some diagonals. Uh, diagonals are always tougher for styluses. So let's see if anything stair stepping. So I'm going to go slow. Now there is a little bit of stair stepping. Now, but then again, oops, see, look at that. My palm didn't register. My palm registered something there. So I'll go slow again. And I'll go from this side here. And I'll go from this side. Now if you go quicker, the software kind of uh, helps 
uh, remove the the jagged stair steps that can appear up here. So that's freehand version of it. So let me change colors and let's go and try to do it uh, with rulers. So I got my little trusty old ruler over here. Let's go down here and hold it down. Let's do the diagonals or no, the, the horizontal lines first. Let's do that. So you know, it's kind of slippery. So I'll do just hold it down. So I'll go slow this way. And you see it tracks pretty well. So handles horizontal lines just fine. Flip it over this way, go vertical. I should go from this side. Now obviously there's software that kind of does this. You don't have to use a real physical ruler on the device, but that's just for show to the basically without software assistance, how well it works. As I toss my ruler, sorry guys. All right, let's try to do the diagonals because diagonals are always tricky. So this time this uh, will remove my any hand jitter from from doing this, and we'll just kind of go slow. As, I, as my ruler slips. So there is there is just a tiny bit of, of uh, tiny bit of stair stepping. Just a little bit. It's not bad though. It's actually quite good in some ways. So this, this was not not a bad thing at all. So it handles it pretty well. Alright, so let's just enough of that ruler test. Let's go actually just do some real sketching here. Just to kind of get a feel for what that's like. So I'm going to use uh, the pencil tool. I'll use a uh, blue pen this time. And we'll just start sketching something. I have no idea what I'm drawing. I'm kind of just goofing around here and drawing something. So the drawing is pretty decent. I have really no complaints. It actually handles tracks pretty nice. The pen kind of goes where I want it to do, it's, and the tip itself is pretty smooth. So you know, it's not not. Uh, I don't feel like I'm etching into the screen at all. So, but then I have kind of a light touch too. So you have to take that into consideration as well. But this is just you be using the the pencil tool here. So the Wacom works really really well. Now the one caveat is that there are some weird issues with uh, the drivers. I think and hopefully they can fix that. Where you know rotating too many times tends to disable the tablet driver. It's kind of annoying because the only fix for that is to reboot the system. Add some more dynamic to this. Let's take use uh, some different tools here. I want to go to a nice black now. I'll use this uh, fountain pen tool here. It's kind of nice because it gives you um, this inking pen is nice because it gives you a variety of, of line widths. I can go real light. And then the harder I push, it gets really big as it goes along. So that's kind of a cool, uh, cool tool to use. So I will now use it to kind of just kind of go over some of this stuff. And that's a little bit of um, goofiness. That's always tough to kind of prevent. There's uh, little gloves you can use there that uh, can help. I'll just show those, show you guys one of those one day in a future video. All right, so that's that. Let's uh, go and get the layer manager back out. So let's bring this up. Where's my layer manager? It was over here, down here. So I've got to choose the, let's see, this layer. Oh, uh, let's see. Hmm. All right, I goofed. I wanted to have a layer below this one. Well, I'll just I'll just go ahead and just use the airbrush, for example. Let's we'll use the airbrush, and we'll go around things. We'll give it a nice little kind of maybe a brownish color here, and we'll just kind of go over things here. Let's see. I'll make it kind of big. So I'm going pretty quick over everything, and it's, it's able to keep up. Uh, so it's kind of nice. I can get the smooth action of kind of like uh, using an airbrush. 
going around things. Have a little bit of shadow here. I can give them some tone. I can shrink this down a little bit. Back. Let's go to the side here. So there you go. So different tools uh, that you can use, and uh, it responds quite nicely. And I have really no complaints about how it responds. All right, so let's go move on to some uh, other tools uh, besides Sketchbook and see how that works. All right, so I'm in Photoshop. Uh, this is Photoshop CC 2017, latest version from Creative Cloud, and I randomly chose uh, something that was popular today for on Bing for whatever reason. Female Chinese uh, fighter pilots are big today for whatever reason, so I just pick one randomly. And load it up in Photoshop. So let's, we can go and start playing around with this image. Uh, let's see. This, we can use something like the selection tools and kind of uh, you know, pick some areas and kind of uh, give this lo lovely lady a uh, you know, better complexion. She looks a little too pale for me. Let's add some color to her, her uh, skin there. Uh, one way you can do that, we can just quickly just do like an adjustment for layers. And we can just basically go and you know, drag things down a little bit, give her a bit of a more of a tan. There you go. Don't make it too, a little too orange, a little not so orange. Don't want to be too Trumpish like. All right, so there, there's that. So not too bad. Let's go and play with some other tools. Let's go and use a filter. Let's play with the liquify tool. It's always a fun tool to play with. So let me zoom in a bit here. All uh, right, and kind of scoot things over a little bit, and let's play, play around a little bit. Let's start uh, warping some of this stuff here. All right, let's kind of give her a you know, kind of give her a cartoony look here. All right, for, let's see. Um, make it a little wider, for example. Put our color up a little bit more. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. Give it some crazy hair. And let's see. Let's look at, uh, let's see. The construct tool here. Let's kind of bring this up a little bit. Yeah, all right, there we go. Looks pretty good. And let's uh, pucker our lips a little bit, maybe. Bring that in. Uh, bring this in a little bit. Let's shrink that in a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that's not bad. And we can uh, bloat certain areas. How about the bloat the glasses? Yeah, get those glasses up big. Get a little bigger nose there. There we go. And yeah, all right. Now she looks pretty unhappy. So okay, there's that. So all right. So let's uh, play with some other tools here in Photoshop just to kind of see how things work. Now, typically I don't use Photoshop in this fashion. I usually have a keyboard attached to it, but I'm just kind of monkeying around right now. Just to kind of see how well it behaves. And, um, hmm, what can we do? Uh, it's you know, hard to use the cloning tool without a keyboard, so I'm not going to do that. And this taskbar keeps, keeps coming up, which is really annoying. I thought I turned that inking setting off, and apparently it seems to be ignoring that. Let's just trick, make sure it's, it's actually toggled right. So it, it's ignore, it's set to ignore. So Photoshop seems to be more sensitive to the fact that my hand's touching the bottom and it's triggering that. That's really, really annoying. I don't know why it's, it's constantly doing that. I don't know if it's a driver issue where it's just doing this, because I have a lot of the tablets that do not do this. Um, so I don't know, hard to say what's going on. Yeah, it's coming up a lot, a lot more than it was in Sketchbook. My pen's down, so I guess, I guess if not, my pen's not down, it's definitely triggering it a lot more. All right, well, let's just use uh, some other t drawing tools here. Just kind of get a feel for how well the drawing is. You know, that the pressure sensitivity is already available. You can see how my weight changes here. So we can do something like wind effects. Woo, all right. Oh, what a masterpiece. So, you know, we see the, the pen works perfectly fine in Photoshop. And Photoshop itself runs pretty well on the system. You know, once again, it's an i7, uh, you know, new i7 running at 2.7 gigahertz, so it, it'll handle it just perfectly fine. Uh, it may, I don't know, may, it may have problems on the more uh, in-depth or intensive uh, filters, but so far it seems pretty good. So that's Photoshop. I don't want to go too much into it, but right now Photoshop does work pretty well. Um, so let's look at one more, one last program. That's probably going to be, uh, let's take a look at OneNote and see how that works. All right, so back out here, we're going to hit OneNote. Get that going. And I was monkeying around with this earlier already. Uh, let's uh, close that down, add a new page. 
And let's go to the view options and to some, turn some rulers on so we can do some work. Go back to draw and pick this pen tool. And we'll go from there. We'll make, maximize it. All right. So, you now example of classroom setting. I'm going to say this is like um, class notes. And you start working on stuff. Um, you know, this is a. My handwriting is always bad, so, I, so, so I, this is a very poor reflection of showing how good this is because my handwriting is not good in the first place. But um, you see that thing keeps coming up. Ah, just driving me crazy. So one of the things you can always test is how well loops, loops work okay. This is a test, for example. Um, yeah, the, te the touch gestures seem to be very awfully sensitive. Um, you know, you can, if you're working in class, you know, working on volume, for example, or geometry things, you know, there's really no issues uh, working with this. The pen works pretty well. It's actually better than the, than the intrigues that were in the previous versions uh, of the Surface Pro 3 and 4. Uh, they have been, they've been coming a long way, so they may give this a, a run for the money now, but this is still a pretty decent stylus. I just wish this the bar would just stop coming up. I guess the one way you can, you can get around is you can always move the bar somewhere else another, to another side of the screen, then it won't, ha won't happen. But um, in this particular setting, it's rather annoying. Uh, so, yeah, and it's funny because I have used other tablets that don't seem to have this particular problem. This one just keeps kind of bringing it up for whatever reason. It just, uh, just wants to always come up. So, you know, you can, you know, as you can see with this, you know, the draw options for various colors here for using OneNote. If you needed to, to uh, indicate things or sketch some more, if you're in a more or, you know, graphics oriented type of class to take notes for things. Or, you know, let's erase that. And as I use, like, say, different colors here. So for taking notes, this actually works out pretty well. And uh, the nice thing about it, once again, is this is a, this is a relatively relatively light tablet portion, so you can actually easily take it around with you. Um, so yeah, all right. I don't want to drag this video on much longer. Uh, hopefully this explains and hopefully shows how well the the pen works on this device and the fact that the pen docks at the bottom when you don't need it. So if you have any questions or things that you want to see more, you know, feel feel free to send me some feedback and some comments. I'll do what I can to show you. So, you know, like, like this video, subscribe. Thanks for watching.